working on an unfinished Victoria Steamboat Part 8. Filling the gas tank using the new adapter, silver soldering the special O-ring union onto the gas pipe. After fitting the condenser oil trap, it is time for the final live steam test. To start this video, I'm in the main workshop. I know that I've said never fill a gas tank. Indoors, it is a very dangerous practice. In the main workshop, all the doors are currently open, so it's fairly well ventilated. In the part of the clip that you've just seen, I wasn't filling the gas tank. I was purposely making some liquid gas run around the tank to cool it down. I did this by holding the filler adapter at a slight angle. It doesn't take long to fill these tanks, and in this clip, the tank is full right to the top. That's why the liquid gas is blowing back. You must not fill these tanks right to the top. You need to leave some space for the gas. If you don't do that, then liquid gas will travel down the pipe into the burner, and you don't want that. Here's the gas tank completely full. To illustrate this, I'm using the gas filler adapter minus the canister, which shows quite a lot of liquid gas coming out of the pipe when I depress it. That's it for the gas tank, it's full. Now I'm going to tackle this job by unsilver soldering the existing coned union on one end, and then fitting this one. I'm not doing this job as you would expect. It's easier to remove the old union cone by simply heating the area to a dull red and removing the union cone from the end of the pipe. You may be wondering why I'm fitting this new union to the wrong end of the pipe. The answer is simple. This is a straight piece of pipe. In this case, it's much easier to remove and fit the new union on a straight length of pipe. It's very important with gas piping to make sure that you do not have any scale inside the pipe this would block the jet. And for that reason, I'm quenching the pipe in an aerosol cap which contains Kilrock K from my acid bath. Once I'd removed the coned union and cleaned up the silver soldered end on the belt sander, which I sort of overdid, I'm ready to solder the new part in place. The end is now covered in Easy Flow number two flux and I'm fitting the part onto the end of the pipe. All I need to do now is heat the general area until the flux takes on a watery appearance and apply some silver solder. And then once again I quenched it in the acid. I also rinsed it in water later but I didn't show that. I cleaned up the end of the pipe and fitted the o-ring, not forgetting to put the knurled union on the pipe first. This is one eighth of an inch diameter pipe and I find it really easy to get silver solder down the end of it and block it so here I'm testing it to make sure gas comes out of the end when I open the valve. Back now in the small workshop that's built onto the kitchen. First thing I did was to bend the end that I've just silver soldered to 90 degrees. It's really easy to bend because the silver soldering anneals the metal and it's now very soft and very easy to bend. Then I unbent the other end to straighten it out so it fitted on the gas valve. The valve on the pipe is the emergency gas shut-off valve. I piped the new condenser in place as you can see here, and it's piped using silicone rubber tubing. The steam test is about to start, and the first thing to do is to fill the displacement lubricator on the engine. Once again, you use steam oil, never machine oil, never motor oil, always superheated steam oil, which is much thicker than normal oils. And also, steam oil doesn't contain additives that normally attack silicone rubber o-rings. The next thing I need to do is fill the boiler with water. The water you can see was what was left over from the previous steam test. Once again, the Mamod funnel is far too small, and I'm filling it with a bottle of water. It's not spring water or distilled water, it's just ordinary tap water in a spring water bottle. As a general rule, it's not a good idea to fill the boiler to this level. What's going to happen when it raises steam is the boiler will prime badly, which means water will be carried over into the steam supply to the engine. I open the valve on the gas tank and light the burner via the chimney using a naked flame. All I have to do now is wait, and not for very long. As I mentioned in a previous episode, this is an early Cheddar Models boiler, and it's not a water tube boiler, it's a fire tube boiler, much more efficient. And also with a sensible burner underneath, it doesn't make a howling noise like you get with the plug-in type ceramic burners. 
Once the engine starts, I'm going to use a stopwatch on my mobile phone to time the duration of the run. This is what I thought would happen. The boiler is over full, and as it's raising steam, once I open the steam valve, it just admits water to the engine to start with, which runs everywhere, all over the base plate. As a general rule, it's better to fill the boiler three quarters full, then you don't have this problem. It's much better now the steam plant is fitted with an exhaust condenser. This is what it's caught so far, and the run hasn't really started. Most of this condensate was from overfilling the boiler. As soon as the engine ran under its own steam, I pressed start on the stopwatch. And that's it for the narrative on this particular video. You will see me emptying the condenser frequently and showing the time on the stopwatch as the test progresses. Here I'm having a feel at the gas tank just to check what the chill level is and it's really not bad. Gas tanks chill and can even ice up owing to the evaporation of the gas inside the tank. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this series.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.